Thank you very much, Joseph. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Once again, greetings from Nepal. Namaskar. Uh, so you can see that uh, the the trend from 2007 to, to 2021 and 22, we have got so far only one positive culture positive case in 2023 this year. So 2021 was the difficult year for us in terms of cholera control because Kapil Bastu, a uh, district which borders with India, the Uttar Pradesh, we had a uh, like you know, very like you know, major outbreak over the years. You can see, and seven unfortunate deaths that year. Unfortunately, none of them could come to the hospital. Uh, they all were either uh, they died on the way to hospital or they remained at home uh, because of so many other social reasons. Some kids were just left at home. The mothers, uh, the parents were working, for example. So such, so, 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 I mean, the, you know, uh, sad story. So if we look the outbreak timeline in different parts of Nepal, this is the map of Nepal. You see the northern part is bordering with China. That is also open border, but it's, you know, the separated by the great Himalaya. The, the tall mountains, including Mount Everest. In the south is an open border with India. Uh, Bangladesh is also very close from our, like, you know, northeast border. So maybe roughly separated by 20 kilometers uh, from there, uh, from that corner, if you see from here. Probably Bangladesh is somewhere here in this map. And a and, uh, so-called chicken's neck in India, uh, in connecting northeast of India to the West Bengal. And, and uh, you see that this was one district in 2009 where there was a m sort of like major uh, incidences of acute uh, gastroenteritis and cholera. Uh, then you see the outbreaks appeared in 2000 by the time we came to 2012, different districts, the Morang districts, the Biratnagar, Kathmandu Valley, and some other districts in Western Nepal. These uh, are like an, another topographically small country, but it's nearly 1,100 kilometers by length and 500 kilometers by breadth. And you can see the topography, the, the middle hills, middle districts are the hills, down hills, the bordering with India are Plain land, Tarai we call, and the top districts are the mountainous districts where the residence itself is low, the population density is quite low. So once again, Rauthat is affected, then, then you can see Kathmandu Valley again, then uh, Kapil Bastu, then uh, Rupni in Sapta, Saptari in Rupni, and then you can see the some of the you know the districts around Kathmandu also had some spillover cases. So uh, though we didn't have a large number of cases, but the risk is everywhere. I'll show you some glimpse of the water and sanitation situation in our country in in the subsequent slides. So you can see that some of the district had only one outbreak over the years, and Kathmandu Valley, the Kathmandu had five times our cases reported, five times, uh, like you know, outbreaks in in, and the majority of uh, outbreak are within the monsoon months. That's right now. Like that's from the end of uh, sort of like May, June, June, May to almost up to September, October, and the Kapil Vastu also same thing happened up to like you know September, and it lasted for almost three months for us to take that situation in control. So what's happening in, in, uh, so like in, the, in the surveillance sector in Nepal? Okay, I'm going forward, so let me go back and then, yeah. <laughs> it will, yeah. <laughs> it's too, too fast, okay, I'll do that, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that slide is already there, but it's controlled from there, is it? I can see Nepal here. Yeah, I can see that. Hey, okay. Hey, okay, thank you. That's why <laughs> I was wondering why things are not moving. Yeah, yeah okay. Thank you. Now I can do, I guess. This I have already shown, don't want to repeat again. And, and I have already highlighted 
So what's happening? It's basically the community uh, sort of like uh, laid water safe planning that's going on, joint piloting with UNICEF, and communities are working closely. Now we have moved to the new governance structure. The government from unitary system has like, you know, for the last uh, like, you know, seven years, we have moved to the federal structure. And, and uh, it's the second term of the local elected bodies. I hope they will be more responsible working in this area. And open field defecation status is maintained, but I'll show you what's, hap what's happening with the, uh, I mean, the exact implementation and the challenges in the subsequent slide. What use committee is inclusive, where the gender, caste, ethnicity, location of tap is all included and water safety you know the program is fully implemented water supply scheme is functional communities aware and knowledgeable on household water treatment regular water quality monitoring with this database system is taking place in spite of all these in theory there are challenges still the water quality surveillance why third party is provision, community satisfaction scored, minimum 80% is needed, and existence of sustainability compact also there. Water quality testing is municipal, municipal level committees are there to monitor the water quality. And in terms of communication and community engagement, activities are going, going on in involving community participation for water quality and supply. We talk always about surveillance and we always highlight the importance of surveillance. We have taken two prongs approach in our surveillance. We are uh, like, you know, getting reports from nearly 128 centers as an indicator based surveillance from the hospitals and health facilities across the country. And we monitor acute gastroenteritis cases and you can see the cases reported in, in our EURs or the warning and reporting system. Uh, and you can see the trend also uh, in the, as per the epidemiological week. And there is a targeted uh, surveillance in few districts, uh, especially Kathmandu and around Kathmandu, around facilities with enhancing cholera control project. I see colleagues from IBI also here. This is supported by IBI. And we are strengthening laboratory capacity for detection of cholera, which is an ongoing work, and we want to link this with antimicrobial surveillance activity up to the district hospital level. Regarding responding to cholera, training our health workers on field, epidemiology training program is going on thanks to US CDC, second batch of Nepal, uh, Nepal's own trend, uh, second batch recently, yesterday only they graduated from FETP program. So we have uh, cadres in the system, trained FETP from different countries, including India, Sri Lanka and all. Now we have our own uh, like production and it's, it's an ongoing process in the national, I mean, health training center. We are institutionalizing rapid response team RRT at municipal level and that will be supported by RRT committee led by the, the like elected local bodies in the other uh, mean, local municipalities and high level response activation from health emergency operation center and national emergency operation center. National emergency operation center is run by like Ministry of Home Affairs and health emergency operation center is run by Ministry of Health and Population. We have got seven uh, provinces and each province has got provincial health emergency operation center. Right now, because it's a time for landslide flood in Nepal because of the monsoon heavy rain, so these uh, systems are fully operational and, and they are reporting to if there are like in the rain situation and everything. So newly uh, like federal structure, I already mentioned there, that's uh, good opportunity also that somehow challenge also to take over because we're used to with the unitary governance system. Sometimes the governance seems fragmented, but we are positively hoping that our people, especially the elected people at the local level, will be more responsive to us, their people's health. And health is a priority. We have been advocating from the center level. The structures are coming into place in surveillance and mechanisms are developed and RRTs uh, are formed and we are, we are getting information day by day that a lot of rapid response teams are being formed. Water quality surveillance is gearing up. That's an exciting news to share. So we had a national preparedness and response plan for acute gantry 
gastroenteritis and cholera outbreaks in Nepal, effective from July 27, uh, 2017 to 2022. We know that it's been nearly one year that we didn't have a new sort of like uh, national plan. So we are now gearing towards uh, preparing new uh, plan for cholera and integrated that with the acute gastroenteritis program. And this time, we envision that we'll go with the global goal, 2030, because majority of our health sector strategy, our activities in the health sectors, all the plans are targeted to SDG target, that's 2030 target. So here also, in terms of acute gastroenteritis and cholera, we want to focus on that. We have done initial discussion when we had a training on with GTFCC training meeting held in Kathmandu. Our colleagues were participants in that training, and they, we, thanks to GTFCC, the, that level of capacity development also happened within Kathmandu also. So this is an opportunity for us to go for implementable, practical, practical national preparedness and response plan focusing on cholera. And I also highlight that not only cholera, acute gastroenteritis also, at least acute watery diarrhea also, so that same measures can help, uh, can save more lives in Nepal. And we, uh, uh, there we already have a mechanism called National Public Health Committee, led by um, Minister of Health and Population. And I'm the member secretary in that committee, National Public Health Committee, in my capacity as a joint secretary and chief of policy planning and monitoring division. So I, we will be using all the multi-sectoral mechanisms uh, to take optimal uh, sort of like utilization of the, the mechanisms which we already have. And very interestingly, whenever there is cholera outbreak happens, the Ministry of Health has to respond and other agencies like we discussed about yesterday also. The agencies which are working on was remain in shadow many a times. It's the Ministry of Health who has to respond either at the parliament or to the public or to the media. So we want to make this committee functional and responsive. So all the stakeholders in including those who work in WAS, are also responsible. Because from Ministry of Health, we are more focused on awareness creation, health promotion, and then preventive activities and the response. We are more focused on that. But uh, it's very difficult at times that we have to answer that why the municipal water supply is not good. That's like the other sector. That's why we need a functional, integrated, and like, like you know, that that's oh, like fully implementable multi-sectoral committees. And that's because with that's possible with political commitment. Is the Honorable Minister himself is the chair of this committee. We are very much hopeful. We just released Nepal's new demographic health survey. Just I have got two slides to share you, just give you just a glimpse of what's happening in the WAS sector in our country. We can share with you detail, but that detail is there available in our ministry website, and I can uh, share with you also. For example, if we see the appropriate management of household excreta, uh, percent distribution of household population by management of household excreta, if you see that, nearly 68% safe disposal in situ of excreta from on-site sanitation facilities, 17% lack appropriate management of household excreta, and 8% are connected to sewer, and 7% are the removal of excreta for treatment off-site. So there are issues here. So going to sanitation level, again, at least 73% uh, uh, Nepal has got basic service, 18% limited service, and even if it's an open field defecation free, in principle, nearly 6% normal population and 9% rural population still do open defecation. It's linked with some of the you know, behavioral practice, especially some communities, and we are working to address these. And these are some of the response activities which being uh, like held in different parts of Nepal. Uh, just uh, just uh, like photograph. This is one uh, cholera outbreak response immunization strategic guideline of Ministry of Health and Population uh, that was primarily intended and prepared when we had an outbreak. And thanks to GTFCC, we got the vaccine support uh, for Kapil Vastu outbreak. And 
uh, we also have piloted uh, this, like you know, self-administration of second dose. Now we see that we are going to single dose. That's fine, but we have we have piloted the second dose with the IVI also, encouraging a report. Nearly 88% took second dose themselves, uh, storing the dose at home. Uh, I thank you very much all the way from Nepal. Since we are near the lake, I thought it's very wise to share another beautiful lake in Pokhara, actually my hometown in Nepal. I thank you all, and if there are any queries, I'll be ready to answer. Thank you.